Hi, I'm Dr. Rajiv Agarwal, gynecologist, fertility specialist and laparoscopic surgeon. And besides delivering babies, I also work with tons of women who have PCOS, gestational diabetes and fertility issues. In more than two decades of my practice, I've often found one root problem occurring in most women who have unexplained infertility, recurrent IVF failures or miscarriages. And that one root problem often has an association with something called insulin resistance. So today, I want to discuss something about type 2 diabetes and how this type 2 diabetes has its root problem in insulin resistance and how this can shape the hormonal problems, infertility issues, miscarriages and pregnancies for most women and also how making metabolic changes can bring about a lifetime change in the health of these women. And today I'm very pleased to welcome someone I hugely admire, Dr. Devashis Basu, a diabetologist and he's of course associated with Apollo Hospital but also has a fantastic clinic of his own called MetaCare Clinic. Uh, thank you Rajiv, I mean it's uh, great to meet after a long time and glad this, this topic is being discussed today. If we start with the basics, I mean if you could just explain to our viewers what exactly is type 2 diabetes and what is your take on the background of it? So you constructed this in you know, a statement very well. Uh, you said, what's the background of type 2 diabetes? Well, people said diabetes is a chronic lifestyle disease, marathon and all that. But well, diabetes is just, you know, one end of the spec, you know, somewhere in the spectrum. That starts with insulin resistance as you go up on the journey of fighting uh, that sugar going up, bringing down with insulin. Insulin is being secreted more and more from the pancreas. It is trying to take the glucose and put it in the deposites. And those fat cells are, they resist that insulin lock and key mechanism for the glucose to get delivered in the, you know, the liver, the fat cells and the muscles. So what happens is you secrete more insulin to get rid of the glucose from the blood. Again, the same thing happens. It gets kicked out by the, you know, the, the depot cells, the insulin sensitive tissues. And then you find insulin and blood both in the circulation, the police chasing the, you know, the thief to get rid of the thief and put it in the jail, that doesn't happen. And finally, we're more insulin resistant. And with time, you have suddenly one morning you wake up, you see your fasting sugar has gone beyond, you know, 126, your PP sugar with the 75 gram glucose challenge is more than 200. And that's where you call it diabetes. So it's, and then, you know, by the time you're in the 20s, you hit a milestone, which is type two diabetes. Now it's like a badge or badge of honor on your, on your chest and you're carrying with it. So now you're walking with insulin. And with insulin, you'll gradually gain a lot of good friends, like top to toe, you know, from stroke, heart attack, peripheral arterial disease, amputation, the microvascular, retinopathy, nephropathy, neuropathy, the liver fat, sexual dysfunction, you name it and you have it. But what we usually do not kind of think of at one go, is we miss out the women's health issue. We are unhappy because we don't consider that women's health issue should be a big part of diabetes management. I think no one could have put it more interestingly, more beautifully and probably more simply than what you have about type 2 diabetes. But the problem sometimes is that diabetes does not always present in big problems to start with. At least when I deal with women, I, I feel it sometimes starts to present as just that weight gain happening or maybe fatigue happening or those irregular periods happening, a woman not knowing why she's not ovulating very well. So one has to pick up those signs, probably as I would say, those small little milestones, you know, because before we reach that big point, there are these small little checkpoints, which probably if you pick up or I pick up in my practice, the bigger problems could probably be avoided and the path or the health path for these women can be entirely changed from where it was supposed to read. So as a gynecologist, I do see all these patients, but then as a diabetologist, you must be seeing so many of these patients from so many gynecologists and obstetricians. What is your take on this? We do get to see these uh, women and unfortunately, when we see them, they are already on a, on a, on a mode of getting into GDM. GDM is? gestational diabetes mellitus, which is a kind of a carbohydrate intolerance that you observe for the first time when you're pregnant. Or at least, uh, you know, that unfolds. Maybe you had earlier, but the whole uh, brunt of carrying a, you know, fetus in the womb 
the human placental lactogen that comes out, uh, that poses a resistance to the insulin action. And this gives the blood sugar to spike in the mother. Unfortunately, the blood sugar goes up. Again, insulin goes up to get the blood sugar down. But this blood sugar traverses the placenta, goes to the baby, but the insulin cannot cross the placenta and the baby grow, starts growing in size. If you can actually address this population of PCOS early, then you can also avert GDM from happening. And moreover, we see that the girls with higher BMI or, I mean, today we don't define obesity in India as only BMI. We consider waist, for example, you know, the waist and height ratio. All put together, if they are not normal, they have high chance of becoming, you know, GDM cases when they're pregnant. The first time you see the girl in your clinic with a 75 gram anhydrous glucose load, your blood sugar uh, at two hours should not cross 140. If it does, she is a case of GDM. Unfortunately, India has is proudly can boast of around more than 25 percent, more than you know, one out of four girls will get pregnant in India will become gestationally diabetic. I'm so thankful to you for bringing out two very important points, and I'm going in the reverse order. So about screening at the beginning of pregnancy, and I want to put it out both for patients as well as for doctors, that screening at the beginning of pregnancy cannot happen with HbA1c, cannot or should not happen with fasting sugars because we're dealing with a young population. And in this population, you don't find them to be frankly diabetic. They're more glucose intolerant. And thereby doing a 75 gram glucose challenge test picks up the people who are probably in the early stages of developing gestational diabetes and you can nip the problem in the bud. So thank you for bringing that out. But there is an additional problem because India is becoming the obesity capital, diabetes capital of the world. So I do have a lot of patients who are coming in with a high BMI, with elevated sugars, with probably motivated or non-motivated and we just don't know what to do with them and it sometimes becomes very difficult and uh, probably sometimes wrong or right on my part to tell them, I'm sorry, I will not take your fertility journey forward till such time you bring that 100 kilos down to a normal BMI because you also have elevated sugars. And this is a dangerous combination. So what would you suggest we do in this kind of a situation where they've tried a diet, they're probably wanting to exercise but not being able to and the weight is so high that the motivation is really gone down to the dogs. So, what helps in this case? You're absolutely right, as always. You can do a preconception counseling. You have a fair, you know, number of days in hand, six months of putting in folic acid, you know, giving, in, giving all the right things to make the ovaries, because chronic hyperglycemia actually disturbs the ovary, the follicular development, uh, the, you know, the oocyte maturation, the endometrial lining on the uterus, even the hormonal, the brain to ovary, the talk, the cross talk doesn't happen. So these are all, uh, got, you know, taking care of uh, themselves by getting the sugar numbers down. And how do you do that? In this kind of a setting, maybe a molecule which has come into the market, it's almost now uh, three years we are uh, writing this. Uh, it's called semaglutide, oral semaglutide, Rebelsis. Rebelsis does magic, you know. It takes uh, uh, care of the gut-brain axis. We are getting diabetes, we are getting obesity because of the wrong food. And if that is so, and we can't tame our tongue, then this medicine will have the responsibility to take the ownership. So it will give you, uh, you know, logically, it gives you such a signal in the rewards segment of the brain that you will not crave for the energy dense food. And the action is, it slows down the gastric emptying. So you have a little bit of food, it lies down, it, it, it gets static in the stomach. It normally passes down by five, six hours. Here it, holds back. So with the vagus nerve, it gives a signal to the brain. It's called a you know, uh, negative kind of feedback that there's food. So don't uh, ask him to eat. So there's also a center in the brain, hypothalamus, the satiety center, which gets a signal from this medicine saying that no, he is full, he's satisfied, no more food. And gradually you'll realize that you are hating uh, you know, the energy dense. You do not like fatty food. You do not like too sugary substance. You, you stop smoking, you stop drinking. So good things happen. So thanks to Rebelsers, if you prime the patient to your patient early and you plan the pregnancy, say, you know, this is July, 
So next three months down the line and the weight has come down to a uh, you know, healthy level, the sugars are under control, you stop rebelsis two months prior to your date of conception because that's the strength of your and my uh, preconception counseling. The educators will teach you exactly what to have, how to have, what are the you know, upper body exercises you will do when you are pregnant, now the whole body exercises and the mindfulness. Mind you, that chronic stress has to be completely removed. So this is something that you and I have to do together. We have to work in tandem. I mean, you, both of us will actually reduce the weight of diabetes and the burden of being overweight and obese.